Hey everybody, this is Jay with Elise Guitars again. Um, this new series is going to tackle what went wrong. And I'm going to take a look at some experiments that didn't go so well. Uh, maybe somebody brings something in to me. We can go over that and see how we can tackle those. The first thing I want to take a look at is this old jumbo that's been hanging around unfinished forever because um, it developed a couple issues and I've used those things to get better as I went along but this thing is actually about 10 years old. It's just been sitting with this unfinished body unbound and I'll show you exactly what happened. This guitar is a design of mine based off of the Gibson J200 Jumbo. This started its life about 15 years ago and had a few things happen that I wasn't happy with. Uh, I did some experimentation on it on the internal side of things that I really didn't think were going so well. So I let it sit and moved uh, my shop from Wisconsin to Colorado. And in the meantime, had some things happen that uh, have guided my philosophy on how to do some bracing. And I'll show you that. There are two cracks. One is here and one is here. These are really originating because of some structural issues on the inside that I was trying something new and I'll get to that when the top comes off. And I could probably get away with putting the uh, fretboard over the top of this because if you can see, I've marked these pencil lines here and here. And I really could get away with putting the fretboard right over it, gluing it up and hiding it and trying to get away with something. But that's not really my style. The other compounding issue is that we have a top separating and that's happening right through here. Now this really was probably really really only my ninth or tenth guitar and when I build braces now I also put a little cleat or a diamond shaped brace right down here between the uh, lower tone bars and the uh, end block that is right in through here. I'm certainly not ruling out that my joint wasn't as clean as it could have been. Uh, there also isn't a finish on the guitar and moving from Wisconsin, which is a pretty high humidity to Colorado, which is an extremely low humidity. Certainly uh, humidification plays a part in that. Seeing that this guitar is not very far along in the construction process in terms of binding, in terms of bridge, things like that, putting a finish on it, not much has to be done to take this top off. Had it been further along, maybe I'd think about trying to do some repairs or hiding this up here. Um, but really, I just don't feel good about continuing this. And it's certainly a good subject for this video series. And it's a good opportunity to take a look at some things that have gone wrong. So first thing I'm going to do is take the top off. When you uh, remove certain parts, when you're going to do a repair, it's always helpful to know how things were assembled before. If this was further along, we wouldn't see some of the things that I can see now. But I can certainly tell that this was done with a yellow PVA glue. You can see these drips that are coming down here. A little bead of glue right there. This is all yellow, crusty stuff. And so I know that it's been done with that yellow PVA or, you know, a, a tight bond type of glue. The one thing that we need to remember is that that PVA is not going to be able to be glued directly again. So we need to remove all that and sand all that off before we put something new on. One of the concerning things about this top and just getting rid of this top is that I really, really, really like this rosette. This was a rosette that I did just putting in some very small Coca Bolo pieces and inserting those in between these purfling and uh, this curly maple here. And I'm going to see if I can save this from the top, but I'm looking through my sound hole at the bracing 
The bracing is definitely not the way I do things now. There's a uh, few things that are different and I'll show you those when we get to the inside. These are the tools I mostly use when I need to pry apart pieces that have been glued. Um, this one is a masonry tool. I call it a spatula. I'm sure that there's another name for it in the masonry world. And the other ones are cake spatulas. Some of them are offset like this one and this one, although this one used to be flat and I offset it myself. Uh, the other ones are flat and you can tell which ones get used the most. The other tools are a heat gun and a clothes iron. I'll just trap this in a vise. And when I turn that on, I'll just use this to heat the spatula in front of it as it is running. Heat that up and use this on the top in addition to the iron. The iron I use is just a standard household iron, clothes iron. Now, you can certainly use the same one that you use on your clothes. Uh, maybe some people in the house wouldn't be too happy with that. Now this I'm going to put on pretty high. I might as well crank this all the way up. Now, if this was a top that I was planning on saving, if I had any hope at all of saving this, then I might dial it all the way back or not use any direct heat at all and just use that heated spatula method that I showed you before. The heat isn't going to transfer itself enough down onto the linings or kerfing that it's going to separate from the body. I'm not really concerned about that. I just want to get the top off of the body. Now the one issue we are going to run into is that it's going to be a little more difficult where the bracing goes through the body and we've got these channels here and here that you can see the glue line is going to be further under. So that might be a little troublesome, but we will get to that. There we go. Once I get the piece started right there, it's a little easier to get this just to run along the edge of it. I'll get maybe uh, anywhere from a half an inch to an inch progress and then I'll have to reheat the spatula. And if you apply enough heat to it, it'll start on fire and burn your shop down. So be very careful when you're applying heat, um, whether it's a heat gun, whether it's an iron, a heating blanket, whatever it is in your shop, make sure things are controlled. You have a good system in place, some reminders to make sure that those things are unplugged because it can be dangerous. Now you can see here, I actually am cooking that a little bit. And like I said, if I was gonna attempt to save this top, I would be much more careful and not let something like that happen. But my primary concern is just getting this top off. That was a good slice there. All right, that was the last piece holding it on. The top is now off and I wasn't as careful as I could have been, especially in this area and some of the up here. You can see here there's some wood left and here as well. And of course, this is not really reusable. And I didn't want to, I never intended to. If I wanted to, um, it's, it's totally possible to take a top off 
without destroying it or the sides, but it does take a lot more time and care than I really had to do this. I just needed to get this one off. If you recall, there were two cracks, one here and another one here that this actually just broke right off on right through there. They were about a millimeter underneath the fretboard. So it's totally possible that I could have salvaged this part. But again, there were some issues up here as well. And all of those things combined, it was just better to take this off and to start over. Here you can see that this line and this line are exactly where those cracks were. So what I preach to all my students because of this, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad this happened uh, because it did teach me a pretty valuable lesson. And I'm glad I didn't discover this after the guitar had been totally built and finished and had to go back and either scrap it or uh, really redo much more than I wanted to. If you glue an unsupported joint like this directly in parallel with the uh, grain of the piece that's going to sit on top of it, it is going to uh, most likely fail. This is especially a big deal if the materials are dissimilar. So this is ma maple and the top is spruce and they are going to expand and contract at uh, much different rates. And if you have this right on the joint line, you're, it's just going to fail. I do still think this idea has some value to create this cantilever as a support to the fretboard that's going to come over the top and then the upper transverse brace is going to come right along here. And what I am going to do is just round off this support. It'll have kind of a tongue shape rather than these straight sides that are going to cause some issues. And much like the uh, popsicle brace, if you've seen my construction video, then this joint is going to be crossing all of the grain lines on the top and should not present that same issue. So that is how we are going to fix it. Now I will get this side to match this side. I'll get the whole thing cleaned up and then I will take this to the radius dish and get all these bits and pieces off, get the old glue off. And after all of that, that should really conclude this lesson in gluing parallel to grain lines. And then there's just a couple other things on the top that I want to address as well. On this part, when I'm taking it to the radius dish, uh, what I'm really looking to do is just clean up all these bits and pieces, this leftover wood, the leftover glue. As this guitar, I kind of went all out on and put a solid lining um, on top of the kerfing and then uh, cut all of my kerfs into it. So uh, a lot of this was very custom and I was trying a lot of different things. Some things worked, some things didn't. Um, lessons are always good to be learned um, when the stakes aren't that high. And if you can learn from someone else's mistakes, oof, that, that's where it's at, man. It's interesting to take a look back at uh, a project like this, which is about 13 years old, noticing a few things about it. One is that, as you can see, my main X braces um, were laminated with this carbon fiber. And that's something I did quite a bit in 
my early years of guitar making. Uh, I really did like how well it stiffened things up. Uh, it was incredibly light for how stiff it was, especially when you laminate it with uh, spruce like this. The biggest issue I had with it is that it is just crazy bad on tools. It, it seems like I was sharpening every five passes or, or, or so. The maintenance that I need to do on my tools and the amount of steel that I had to continually knock off of my uh, chisels and planes to get back to um, a usable edge just was not worth the hassle. And so I gave that up. I've gone really just back to um, tapered uh, spruce on all my braces. Now that I've got my heel block extension shaped exactly the way I want it to, it's tapered, it doesn't run parallel with those grain lines anymore, it's nice and rounded, um, it, I've got it sanded how I want to on the inside, there aren't any sharp edges, uh, I'm confident that this is going to take care of all those issues I was having before uh, on the top. This is the new top that's going to go back on the guitar. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It's a beautiful top. The center joint turned out exactly the way I want it to. I was able to salvage the rosette from the previous top. I installed that and gave it a little bit of an oversized sound hole at 110 millimeters. And then added some vulcanized paper, vulcanized fiber, um, same thing that they make purfling out of to the interior here. It gives it some nice contrast um, when you're looking at it from the top. I really appreciate you sticking with me. I really appreciate you watching this whole video. Any likes, subscribes, and comments, uh, I really, really appreciate. So thank you so much. Let's make some sawdust, and I'll see you in the next video.